What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Subtropical Storm Dawn has formed in the subtropical Atlantic over here, about 1,000 miles east-northeast of Bermuda. We're going to go ahead and quickly go over the public advisory as well as the cone. As you can see, maximum sustained winds are at 45 miles per hour. They were at 50 earlier today. Uh, it is moving west north, uh, sorry, north northwest at uh, seven miles per hour. Pressure's 1,004 millibars right here, and winds of 40 mile per hour plus extend out 205 miles from the center, which is basically the equivalent of tropical storm force winds right there. Additional gradual weakening is expected during the next few days, and dawn could become a potential post-tropical cyclone or remnant low at any time, according to the NHC. Now, we have the cone right here. It is expected to continue moving north until Sunday, and then it starts to make an eastward turn, and then more of a southward turn starting on Monday or Tuesday over here. It's mostly going to be a fish menace around here. It's not going to be affecting the Azores anytime soon, so definitely something to keep an eye on, but right now, no real threat to land. We do have a couple of tropical waves starting to come off of the coast of Africa over here in the main development region, so definitely something to pay attention to. And we'll get to why in just a second. But before we do, we need to go ahead and talk about the global sea temperatures. First off, the global sea temperatures, right now the temperature is around 26, 27 degrees Celsius, which is about 80 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, where dawn is. It is expected to move into some cooler waters as time continues to go on and then start weakening from there, as the NHC expects. However, the main show is pretty much all over the place. Like, we're looking at blobs of 30 plus degrees Celsius in parts of the Atlantic over here uh, from basically all the way to South Carolina, uh, parts of off the coast of Georgia, definitely off the coast of Florida, all across the Gulf of Mexico. This is something you would typically see in late August, early September right here, and it's already mid-July, and we're seeing 30 plus degrees Celsius temperatures across the Gulf of Mexico, just to zoom in a little bit. The 30 degrees Celsius, the 31 degrees Celsius is starting to creep up across parts of the loop current, across, of, across eddies. It's really not a good scenario situation that's going on. 32 plus degrees Celsius waters are in the, across the Bahamas, parts of Florida, especially in the Florida Keys, parts of Cuba right there. And we're seeing temperatures of even hotter than that. Yesterday, we reported on Pat's Path Predictor a temperature of 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit off of the Everglades National Park, which that is a U.S. record right there. Absolutely crazy right there, so definitely something to continue to keep an eye on over there. Needless to say, the entire Gulf of Mexico water-wise is primed. The part, entire Caribbean Sea water-wise is primed for development, and the NH and the MDR rather is primed for development as well, and we'll continue to keep an update as time continues to progress over here. OHC continues to grow by the day. It's getting quite ridiculous at this point how high it is, how high it is, especially across the Caribbean, across parts of the Gulf right there, especially across parts of the Atlantic Ocean over here. OHC's 50 extend all, way, all pretty much almost all the way up to Bermuda over there, and this is where we were in 2020 around this time. MDR wasn't even that maxed out right there, and this is where we are at in 2023. So this is pretty crazy, and we still have two months left of water to continue to warm up. And this is going to only get worse as time continues to go on. Now, the shear has been pretty interesting. We're going to go ahead and show you that. The shear has continued to fluctuate throughout the days. Across the Western Caribbean, the shear is limited. Like, it's gone pretty much. It's around 10, 15 knots. So anything that can get up there could definitely develop. The Gulf of Mexico is now full of shear where it was yesterday, where it had no, little to no shear. The MDR, though, continues to be primed for shear development right there. And if we take a look at the European model, it's going to continue to fluctuate, but the MDR is going to start gradually calming down with the shear, although this part in the Caribbean, the stubborn part in the Eastern Caribbean, it's going to calm down for a little bit, and you'll see that in just a second, according to this latest run right here. It starts weakening for just a second, around five days out, and then after that, it starts to really build back up again. So this whole part of the Eastern Caribbean, this year has continued to be remain very stubborn, and it is expected to, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. 
it's a good thing because for now it's not going to limit tropical development, but it's going to be a bad thing because once that shear starts to weaken and it's going the longer the shear is there, the longer these warm waters and is going to are going to continue in the uh, growing in the Caribbean, the longer we have more and more OHC starting to develop right there and the longer that continues going on before systems start to tap into that that means there's more and more energy for these hurricanes and tropical storms to work off of and that means there's more and more chances of these things rapidly intensifying and intensifying into those major hurricanes we all love to fear right there and then as you continue this shear does fluctuate across the gulf it starts to die out a bit in the mdr especially in the western mdr in the next 10 days or so so definitely something to continue to monitor as time continues to progress. Now we're going to go ahead and show you uh, the, the moisture component to this because you can you can have good shear, you can have good waters, but you have to have moist air to really e equal the equation right there. And you can see, especially in the MDR, the moist air does start to continue to grow and the dry air starts clearing out, especially around here. So definitely something we must continue to monitor. The Sahara dust is going to continue to de, uh, to basically grow and continue to develop right there. But once that Sahara dust starts weakening starting in late July into early August, it's going to start becoming more and more like open season for these tropical systems, especially in the MDR. And if we take a look at the Caribbean, if that dry air starts to weaken right there due to the Sahara dust primarily, that's going to also inhibit some potential tropical system development right there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the ensemble runs. I've been paying attention to Don, although it's not going to really be impacting much. It's going to be mainly staying out to sea right there. However, about four days out, I am noticing a tropical wave starting to come off of Africa and starting to show some scenarios right here, at least in the main development region. And it's going to start off really slowly, but you're going to start seeing gradually more and more of these scenarios start popping off and start developing some potential tropical storms, potential hurricanes, especially as it approaches the Lesser Antilles right there in the next 12 days or so. So, so that's what we have going on. It moves through the Antilles. Start, some of them start intensifying. Some of them start dissipating. And some of them continue to move th through, uh, through right there. And really, we're continuing to see that upswing. The European's been pretty consistent about it, although it has been weakening because before in previous runs, we've seen like stuff going down to the 980s, 970s, millibar-wise, hurricane strike. Now we're seeing a couple of them going up to hurricane strength right there, but then uh, they start uh, but then they start weakening as they approach the Caribbean, primarily due to that shear component right there. We're going to go ahead and show you the GF GFS ensembles just to kind of reciprocate that. We're going to go to the zero Z for comparison purposes right here. The zero Z right here, as you can see, we still have some situations going on. We have some scenarios going off. The GFS is being somewhat aggressive right now with all these scenarios. And this is what we got going on. This is 10 days out. And we have multiple scenarios of hurricane strength systems moving through into the Lesser Antilles right here, some of which potentially very strong hurricanes right here. I am taking this with a huge grain of salt. But if these continue, these could impact the United States in the next 16 days or so. However, considering these start to develop like what um about about seven days out or so i am going to take them with a grain of salt anything more than like five from the gfs i take with a grain of salt now for the g gps ensembles right here and they're showing similar situations with more scenarios starting to fire up in the MDR right there. It's going to take a second right uh, for that to well, load up right there, but it's not nearly as strong as the European or GFS. They do have a couple of scenarios getting up to hurricane strength, but it's not a partic it's particularly isolated and nothing I'm very concerned about right now. But the European and GFS are continuing to start ramping up a bit in their consistency and a bit in their intensity. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.